uh, I welcome you all, my dear learners, on this uh, special series, which today I'm going to take on uh, next examination. And as far as physiology is concerned, how can be the pattern of uh, physiology questions? So I have labeled this today as scenario based question, where you will learn how you're going to apply your basics to your clinics, right? So what, what actually is there, a clinical case or a history will be provided to you. You will have to evaluate, analyze, apply and this is possible only if there is proper, proper, I mean a very proper understanding and explanation being provided to you. So Physiology Synapse to Success is my telegram group where I provide notes for all these contexts. So let's look on to the first MCQ. There is a newborn who is having severe diarrhea with an inherited defect which is found in the glucose transporter resulting in the glucose galactose malabsorption necessitating the baby to take a glucose and a galactose free diet so this is the clinical picture being given to you right so this is integration integration of your physiology of your biochemistry with your pediatrics right now the basic question is what is the transport responsible for the entry of glucose into the intestine? So being a physiologist, I just want to know whether you know that how the glucose is transported. But I cannot put it in a simple way. I am going to put it in the form of a clinical base. Options are GLUT2, GLUT5, SGLT1 or SGLT2. So just recollect the glucose reabsorption. This is the basolateral side of the cells. You know that the glucose is the chief form of the sugar that is reabsorbed and the basic site is your jejunum. On the basolateral uh, side, you have got the sodium potassium pump that keeps the concentration of sodium low by causing a direct hydrolysis of ATP. And this low intracellular sodium is responsible for the glucose transport via the secondary coactive transport mechanism that is SGLT1. So the correct answer for this is that the glucose reabsorption from the intestine, from the apical set or from the intestine is SGLT1 that is sodium glucose co-transporter 1 which can transport glucose which can also transport galactose. It is an example of a secondary coactive transport mechanism that means energy dependent but remember here the energy consumption is indirect because it is not causing direct hydrolysis of ATP. However, once the cell, once this glucose and galactose are inside, they will be transported from here by facilitated diffusion, okay, by facilitated diffusion that is with the help of GLUT. Now you have got GLUT, you have got SGLT, you have got sodium potassium ATPase pump. But the primary mechanism by which the glucose is getting reabsorbed, okay, the basic transport protein is SGLT1 because it is present on the luminal side. Therefore, this becomes the very correct answer. SGLT2 ka jo presence hai, it is more in your PCT. The other options that is the GLUT2. So the GLUT2 is present in the beta cells of pancreas for reabsorption and the GLUT5 GLUT5 is for fructose which is present especially in the sperms and in the jejunum. Glucose reabsorption per se is a very high yielding topic if you go through the INICT and the NEET PG questions also. Second one, uh, there is a lady okay, or a female who is concerned about the sexual development of her son. She asked the physician an increase in which of the following is the primary event. So this is a kind of an educated lady. He knows who knows that what are the various events which take place at puberty and she wants to know that this is going to be the primary or the most important one. Adrenal steroids, FSH LH ratio, GnRH in pulses, morning erections or the size of the testis. 
if you see all of these are actually related to puberty that means during puberty all these things are going to happen there's going to be increase in the fsh uh, fsh lh there's going to be gnrh pulses morning erections especially in the rapid eye movement of sleep is a very classical feature of sexual development in males where there is penile erection size of testis is going to enlarge and adrenal steroids which we call as adrenarche adrenarche which sometimes either is uh, just along with puberty that is pubarche or sometimes it is just prior to pubarche so adrenarche and pubarche they may be either together or just adrenarche may uh, i mean precede your pubarche because these adrenal androgens they take part in puberty especially very important in females now the first or the very must one is your gnrh and wo bhi uska secretion should be pulsatile right the secretion should be pulsatile because if there is a continuous gnrh secretion right if there is a continuous gnrh secretion it is actually going to suppress your lh and fsh which is important cause of inhibition of puberty so a pulsatile secretion is important so you have got gnrh you've got lh fsh adrenal androgens let me highlight over you that this gnrh is coming from the arcuate nucleus of hypothalamus this becomes an mcq apart from this there is something which is called as leptin which is coming from the adipose tissue adipose tissue which is supposed to have a permissive role okay which is supposed to have a permissive role in puberty and something very interesting is something which is called as kiss peptin a new study and we very soon i'm going to come with a very short video on what is kiss peptin so this is all for the day two mcqs to make you analyze what will be your way of thinking so we'll meet up soon let me come with more and more mcqs and you make me i mean you provide more suggestions so that we can make it a very interesting and a helpful physiology Thank you for your listening.